From the outside, it was an only in New York curiosity. <laughs> to the Orthodox rabbis who organized the anti-internet gathering that sold out City Field, it was no laughing matter. In the net, they see a sinister tool that's led to a time, some argue, is more difficult than even the Holocaust. They say the World Wide Web is pushing religious Jews and many others to recklessness, immodesty, and godlessness. It's about the loss of our humanity. It's about the loss of our privacy. It's about, it's about what, 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 what the Internet does to us when we get on there anonymously and we go on to comment sections, we go on to blogs, and we turn into raving lunatics and we turn into, into moral ogres. And rabbis feel they are left to restore what they see as Internet-induced damage, like cheating spouses who find romance online or kids addicted to porn. Some see additional motives. As we saw in the Twitter revolutions in the Middle East, the Internet allows unprecedented challenges to authority. To a certain degree, it takes away from rabbinic leadership when you have now have other voices out there giving people information that they feel could be hurtful to the community. Information like disclosing sexual abuse, covered by this blog, whose editor says she has to work anonymously. Until now, they, they, these people didn't have a voice. And now that we do have a voice, I don't think that the leadership is very happy about that because they're losing their um, control. Elsewhere, 36 leading rabbinical authorities recently banned a popular news site. They called it Satanic. It too covered sexual abuse and political disputes with a busy comment section. The site continues, but its editor is also anonymous. Still others have rabbinic advisory boards, which some believe whitewash legitimate criticism. Supporters acknowledge they fear rabbis are losing power, but they don't think that that fear is misplaced. It's a battle unlike the community has ever quite seen, replete even with death threats. And we'll be talking about it over the next four days. In Brooklyn, Josh Robin, New York One.